Hi, this is Jeff Challen again, and welcome back to CS125. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how to install IntelliJ. IntelliJ is the um, integrated development environment, also called an IDE. This is a source code editor, uh, compiler, debugger, very powerful tool that we're going to use, that you're going to use to work on the MPs this semester. So again, I'm going to walk through this on both Mac and Windows. The process is quite similar. So on Windows, I'm going to again start at the course website. I go to the MPs tab and I go to the IntelliJ page. So as the um, write-up uh, indicates, you need to install Java first. So if you haven't successfully installed Java on your machine, please follow those instructions first and then come back to this tutorial. So this is also pretty easy because um, IDEA, which is uh, who maintains IntelliJ, uh, has a great set of instructions online. So we're gonna go to their installation um, instructions and um, start by downloading IntelliJ, the IntelliJ IDE. Uh, IntelliJ IDEA, I guess, is, is what it's called. Um, now here, what you want to do is you want to use the Community Edition. We are not requiring you to buy any software for this class, and so uh, we're going to use the free and open source version of IDE as opposed to the paid version that they also sell. Um, so I'm going to click on the download link. Uh, the download is going to start. It doesn't take that long. Um, much faster than Java. So once we're done with this, we're going to have an executable installer that we can use to finish the process of installing um, IntelliJ on our machine. Now let me switch back to my Mac, uh, get that process started. The process is again very, um, very similar. So again, start by installing Java if you haven't done that already, and then navigate to the installation instructions for IntelliJ. Find your way to the downloads page and download the appropriate, uh, the free community supported version of IntelliJ. Um, let me switch back to my Windows machine and see if that's finished. Awesome, okay, it's done. When it finishes, I'm going to open it. And again, it's going to launch an installer that's going to walk me through the rest of the installation process. So I have to give it permission. Once I give it permission, um, I'm going to, oh, I see, okay. Hmm. Looks like I've already installed IntelliJ here before, and so I need to delete this folder. Um, okay, and then next, yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm reinstalling this for the purposes of uh, the tutorial. So I have a 64-bit machine. You probably do as well. Uh, I'm going to create a desktop shortcut for the 64-bit launcher, um, and then I'm going to hit. Um, I'm going to hit install. This takes a few minutes while everything is getting moved into place. While this is going, let me switch back over to my uh, Mac, and I'm going to use the installer here, here as well. So once again, I run the installer. Once it's verified, it's going to launch a dialog that will walk me through the process. This is quite simple on a Mac. All I'm going to do is just drag it into my applications folder. And once that copy is done, I will have an executable application in the applications folder. Let's see if the Windows machine has caught up. Uh, not quite. And we're sort of racing these two, I guess. I guess it's slightly easier to install software on a Mac is the is the, oh, the overall impression. So once I have the installer on my Mac, I can find it in my applications folder. I'm gonna run it. I have to say it's okay because I downloaded this from the internet as opposed to installing it from the App Store. You might be able to install this from the App Store. I don't know if they have packages available for Mac on the App Store. Um, and once I fire it up, I've, I can actually see I've had it installed before. I have a couple of projects that I've been working on. Um, and this is the splash screen. So once you get here, you're in good shape. Um, and you can move on to the next part of the IDEA IntelliJ installation uh, process. So um, probably I suspect that, you know, uh, given what you're doing this semester, if I was you, I would probably put a, uh, put a copy of the, of the launcher in my, on my, yeah, let's see here. 
professor, professor fumbles around while doing tutorial. Okay. All right, I'm going to drop it right there. So I have it there, and then I can start it more easily in the future. All right, let me get back into my Windows machine. It's almost done. Um, got to copy a lot of stuff over, and this is a virtual machine, so it's running slightly more slowly than the other machine. But when this process completes, which it will in a few seconds, I'll be able to I'll have a launcher on my desktop, and I'll be able to launch it in the same way that I did, and I'll be presented with a, a pretty similar splash screen on startup. So I'm going to give this a few more minutes to get all of its files into place. IDEA is a very nice uh, IDE for Java. It also allows you to develop a couple of other Java-related languages like Groovy and Kotlin out of the box. Um, and I think you know it's a very powerful tool. So like any powerful tool, it can seem a little bit confusing at the beginning. And we'll have some screencasts and other tutorials to help you get started with it. Um, particularly as you start working on MP0, but it has a lot of features and it's you know reasonably intuitive uh, to use. If you've uh, been familiar with Eclipse, I have also used Eclipse and I consider IntelliJ to be a pretty significant upgrade. Uh, most of the people that have switched from Eclipse to IntelliJ have not found it to be um, that jarring of a change and have sometimes found IntelliJ to be a lot more uh, enjoyable to use as a development environment. Okay, so hopefully this is almost finished because I'm running out of things to say about IntelliJ. Great, okay, so we're done. And as promised, there's a launcher on my desktop, which I can use uh, to fire it up. And when I do that, um, you know, I, I don't want to import any settings. And so I'm just going to run it for the first time. I have to accept the privacy policy. Scroll down to the bottom of this. You can read this if you want to. Um, and so the first time you run IntelliJ, there are some, uh, there is a dialogue to go through, so you can choose how it looks. Um, it's totally fine to skip the remaining and just use the default settings. So if you want to hit that, that works. You can also go through those and set up things uh, appropriately. Uh, don't remove the built-in support for Java or the built-in support for Git, since those are things that we're going to use this semester. And once I've done the initial setup, I'm presented with a splash screen that's very similar to what I saw on my Windows machine. So I'm in good shape. Okay, great. So that's the end of the uh, screencast about installing IntelliJ. If you have any problems, please post on the forum in the appropriate category.